Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. Today is about eyeshadows, guys. This is actually a requested video from one of my clients and I was like, what a great idea. So today I am going to kind of show you how to put together a palette of eyeshadow shades. Like how I would recommend picking colors so that you kind of have the most variety of looks, I guess you could say. And then we're gonna do a few eyeshadow looks and I'm gonna show you guys all the combinations of different ways you can wear those shades. So hopefully it'll help with your eyeshadow game. If you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and thanks for being here. guys let's get into it of course i already have my full face done so we don't have to waste any time with anything other than eyes um since i'm sure i'll get asked i always put all the colors to every video in the drop box beneath the video if you're ever curious like what was that eyeshadow or lip and cheek color she was wearing it's always in the drop box but since i'll get asked i'm wearing the brand new madrid lip and cheek with la cienega over it might be one of my new favorite combos. I'm loving it. All right, let's get into eyes. I have already primed my eyes with my eyeshadow primer. I have evened out my eyelids with my highlight shades, and then I've got a nice base of powder over it, so I am good to go with our eye look. So I do have a compact here, and we're gonna kind of pick and choose shades. This is gonna be based on my eyeshadow categories that I've kind of made up over the years that I feel like um, will really kind of help you pick and choose since our colors online are kind of deceiving. Um, the way it looks like in the 10 is deceiving for not knowing how pigmented or how sheer it is, or how light or dark. This is the way I would categorize them. Obviously, there's always some wiggle room with some shades if you're applying it really lightly or if you're applying it really heavily. Um, swatches do make the difference. So I will put in my eyeshadow categories here. In case you've missed that video on how I categorize shades, I will link that down below as well. Um, I definitely re recommend watching that before this one if you are confused what the heck it means that will explain all of it but i am going to be using that system to pick out shades how i recommend setting up a palette with each category and we are just doing eight shadows today so eight shadows to get a variety of looks and how i would pick some from each category so that you get the most versatility. I'm all about mixing and matching, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'll have, I have to admit, you guys, I'm a little type A OCD. <laughs> I say that a little. And I officially, we officially have too many eyeshadows for my double artist compact, and it's driving me nuts. So I do have some over here to the side. Actually, I have quite a few. Um, but more or less, they're all in here. So I'm going to kind of show you guys, I have them by categories. We are going to pick some from each category for the most versatility. Now, obviously this is purely personal preference, the types of eyeshadows you like. So if you are an all matte girl, the same concept applies. You're just going to pick mattes in the same category as the shimmers I choose, all okay? right? Um, and if you don't like that tone, you can easily swap it for a different tone, that kind of thing. So I am gonna talk a little bit about neutrals versus colors um, because I do feel like in order to get the most versatile palette, you do have to have some neutrals in there that will easily go with all the other colors you choose. Does that make sense? All right, so this is my kind of little like cheat sheet here of how if we have eight shades, the categories I would pick. So first off is the number one shade. Um, if you are new, the number one shade is just a light, usually shimmery, because this is gonna be that highlight shade that we use inner corner, 
under brow. You can also use it on the lid if you want some brightness here, um, but usually this is a shade lighter than your skin tone. That is key. It's got to be the lightest shade in your palette, all right? So in my compact, those number one shades are pretty much in this first row. Um, some of these in the second row could actually probably qualify as a one. Um, you'll see on my graphics, some of them are like one, two, meaning depending on how you apply them, they could probably be used as just an inner corner brightener, but they're kind of leaning towards just that light category, not the brightest of highlights, okay? So I'll be honest, I always wear the same two highlight shades. Uh, for my undertones of my skin, for my skin tone, it is the most flattering on my skin tone. So it just kind of depends on you and your eyes and and how much brightness you want. Um, on the daily, I wear Drift or Sabrina. And you can tell those two are very similar in tone. They're more of a warmer undertone, undertone brightener, okay? They are extremely similar, okay? If you have one, you don't necessarily need the other, in my opinion. I also really like Soulmate, even though it's a little pink. It is a very bright shimmer. Um, if you look better in white tones, cool tones, okay? There's Unicorn and Aries, okay? Now, if you can tell the difference, Unicorn is a very finely milled shimmer. Aries is one of those that's more, not a glitter. This is a glitter, okay? but towards that glitter side, meaning it's more of a chunky shimmer. Okay, so if you have mature eyes like me, I don't recommend it. It can be very difficult to apply with mature skin um, and not emphasize texture around the eyes. So I know that's something I look for. I definitely look out for. Um, I never want my eyes to look older than they are because they already look old enough, right? So, um, I'm gonna stick with one of these two, and Sabrina's been my go-to for years, but ever since we got Drift, I feel like it's slightly brighter, and so I've been wearing that on the daily, but it's fun to kind of mix it up. I've even used Blondie for a gold, um, but I would say for this type of a palette builder, you really wanna get a versatile shade that looks good with your undertones. So I would kind of, if you don't have one at all, I would steer clear of kind of more of the colored shades and I would go with something very neutral, and just brightening for your skin tone, okay? So I'd say Unicorn, or if you like a little bit of warmth, I'd say Eggnog or Sabrina. Those two are very similar. You have more mature eyes and you really want to not use shimmer at all. The only one really light enough is Cupcake. Now this is the same shade um, as our Vanilla Dust powder, it's just not transparent like our powder is. It is um, opaque, okay? So this can brighten if you want a matte. If you want the least amount of shimmer and you're like, okay, I'm gonna kind of dip my toe in the shimmer. I've been using mattes and I want a little bit of more brightness to kind of catch that light. That's when I would recommend Rome. So the difference between Rome and Sabrina is just the amount of shimmer and this one is much more subtle and this one's much more bright, okay? I hope that helps. Okay, so you see in my number two spot, I actually don't feel like it's really necessary to have multiple number one shades. Um, like I said, I wear pretty much the same color every day unless I'm just feeling different because I know it's going to go with any eyeshadow combination. It's neutral and it looks good on my skin tone it's just a brightener, right? But you can easily, if you don't even wanna grab that shade, if you really want more fun colors, you can even skip that and just use your illuminator. Whether you have a cream or a powder illuminator, they can totally be swapped out used in the same way, especially if you're not using this shade on the lid and you're just doing inner corner under brow, the illuminator works just fine. So I don't recommend getting two, I actually have a liner shade, okay? So I do, I did kind of cheat a little bit and I did put Black Friday eyeliner in here with my brush cleaning tile because to me, 
it's always in my compact. If I feel like my eye look needs more depth at the lash line, I will always use this, but I always set my Black Friday eyeliner with an eyeshadow shade. And that is because I have mature eye problems, oily eyelid problems, and even with a primer and a powder and all of the things, if I don't set that cream, I will get transfer up here because of the way my eyes are shaped um, and it won't last on me all day. Every time I set it, that will last on me all day, all night. It doesn't go anywhere, but the key is for me is setting it. So I, it's not in my compact because it wouldn't fit. So my daily go-to is coal. Okay. So this is my brow shade trust. So if you don't wear eyeliner, I would suggest switching this out with your brow shade. So um, filling in brows is the biggest game changer. We have a ton of eyeshadows that will work really well for eyeshadow shades. And I prefer a powder over a contour in my brows. I feel like it lasts longer and looks more natural when blended out. Um, so if you need an eyeshadow suggestion for your brows, just shoot me a picture and I can tell you what would be your best bet. Um, and I can enter a graphic here that will show you the swatches. Good options for an eyebrow color. But I wear trust on the daily, always in my brows, okay? It's a nice, dark, neutral. The key with brows is not pulling red, okay? You don't want warmth in your brows unless you're a natural redhead. Um, and coal is very similar. In fact, I've accidentally used it in my brows before and been like, oh, my brows look a little dark. And it's just because it's slightly darker. So to me, this is um, this one is more in the cool brown family and this is coal and this is more charcoal okay so again this can be used if you like your brows even darker than mine but i like it for setting my eyeliner if you like jet black then you would like um salem which is literally just a matte black and it will keep that rich black tone of the black friday eyeliner i like to kind of tone mine down a little bit um, trust I use as well a lot of times, but it will look much more natural as eyeliner. In my opinion, it kind of just lightens it a touch more. So this is my daily go-to. So that is going to be the color I always have in my compact to set my liner. So that would be what I would replace the other highlight shade. I would pick something you can use as liner. And there are a lot of times where I will just use coal and not even use the Black Friday eyeliner. Again, depends on the day, depends on the eye look, depends on mood, all of those things. And, a lot, and I feel like this whole system is made for being able to adjust depending on your mood because there are so many different, if you think about eight shades, that's a lot of different color combinations. If you're using just one or two or three or four, endless, okay? So I feel like this type of palette will give you a lot of different looks for a lot of different days. Um, so you don't even have to worry about wearing the same eyeshadow twice. All right, the next row, I kind of split up into a two and a three. So if you look at my eyeshadow categories, two is just a light shimmer or matte, and three is like a medium shimmer or matte. Again, if you don't like shimmers, go to the mattes. I feel like we don't have a lot of light what I would consider light mattes, um, but it would be in the realm of Paris, Mama, Valencia, things like that, okay? You can tell this one's a little bit lighter, brighter. Um, that is Paris, that's Mama, that's Valencia. And again, these can also depend on your skin tone. So I know some artists who can wear Valencia, um, as almost a crease shade. To me, it's too light for my skin tone. I need something darker. But if you are lighter than I am, remember that these are all numbers based on like one in my category is the lightest and then two, three, four, five, and five being the darkest. So then you kind of have to figure out based on your skin tone, okay, I'm gonna try a three. Is that light enough or dark enough? 
and then you kind of will know how dark the other shades are by looking at the comparison of their numbers. Does that make sense? So again, there is a little bit of leeway in between. It's not a perfect system, but at least we'll give you an idea if you can't always compare two swatches side by side. So in my compact, this row here, I would, well, and some of these is what I would consider the two shades. They're a little bit lighter. Um, they can easily kind of brighten that inner part of the lid. So sometimes you can go and put a two on the inside corner and put a three on the outside of the lid and get an ombre look because you're going from light to dark. And even if it's a subtle difference, um, that is an eye look all by itself, right? So two shade is gonna just be a little bit lighter and then a three shade, I feel like having one of each will allow you to do that kind of look if you want or you can easily just take a two shade all over the lid, call it a day, a three shade all over the lid. And again, it's gonna give you that versatility. I do recommend at least picking one of these two shades that is neutral. That way, if you want a more colorful shade um, for the next two categories, you can pick a color and guess what? You're always gonna have a shimmer for the lid that will go with no matter what color you choose. So my go-to for pretty much anyone um if they want to shimmer and they tell me they love neutrals or they're trying to pair shades together and they're a little nervous about what will go together um it's always going to be stardust okay stardust is literally the perfect neutral taupe okay um you can build it up for more depth you can wear it lighter but it has the most it's not too shimmery it looks great on mature lids as well, but it is just like, do you see how neutral that is? It's not silver, it's not gold. To me, it's a shimmer taupe. It goes with every single color we make, I promise, okay? So that is gonna be my first one. I would probably, can. I don't know, uh, that could probably go a two or three. Again, like I said, not a perfect system, depends on your opinion. Um, in the light, it feels like it brightens enough that it can definitely be uh two because of the brightness but if you look at it it does have some depth so it could be both probably okay so i'm gonna act like that's a three um my next so these are these are all considered three shades okay they're a little bit darker i mean some of these can be really built up some of my very favorites Having that neutral means you can pick more bold colors. If you love a bold eye look, by all means, totally go for Bayou. It's gorgeous, but I would put the other color as a neutral. So I'm gonna pick something a little bit more colorful, and this is one of my very favorites that I feel like every time I wear it, I just love my eye look, and that's Crush, okay? And it is, it's very peachy, so it does lend to the orange family, okay, this color always makes blue eyes pop, but it looks good on any eye color. And you can tell, like it looks good next to everything, especially a new Crush and Stardust are gonna be our two and three shades. Okay. Thought I'd swatch them so far. So we got Drift, Stardust, Crush, okay? Now we're gonna go into the next row and these are gonna be four shades. And in my classification, fours are all mattes. Okay, um, so if you see a four, you know it's a matte on the graphic because I feel like most people, unless you are under 20 or have perfectly smooth eyelids, most people need to wear a matte in their crease. Um, otherwise, it's going to really increase the look of texture, especially if you have hooded eyes or any kind of mature skin on your eyelids. So for me, the only colors I will ever put near my crease are going to be matte shades. So that next category, let's see, it is kind of in here. These don't count. These are getting into the shimmer. So in here, these are all fours. And you'll see on there, if it says four, five, that is a color that can be worn lightly as a four shade or can be built up and get much darker if you apply it heavily to where it's a five shade and that's a deep dark shades, okay? But 
If you see four or four or five, that means it's a matte, okay? So you are clear to use it on your hood and in that crease, okay? Without it increasing that texture. These are the shades that I feel like most people kind of stick to neutrals all, all around. And then they like to have more fun with these shimmery shades and they'll pick up those pops of color there. Keep the crease color neutral at all times and that is completely an option as well. So if you want to keep both of these neutral, I would say pick a four and then maybe you could pick one that is a four or five shade that you can get a little bit more depth. Um, for me, I'm gonna pick one neutral and then I'm gonna pick one that's maybe not quite so neutral um, so that you can wear it and have a little bit more versatility. Because again, if you wear the same neutral crease colors all the time, if you have hooded eyes like me and your eyes are open, that's the main color you see. And that truly can make the most difference in how different your eye looks because not everybody's looking at you when your eyes are closed. They see with your eyes open and that's the color that you bring up or even under that you're really gonna be able to see that color. Okay, so again, so many different colors. When it comes to these shades, usually uh, I talk a lot about neutrals, warm or cool because we truly have it all. And obviously we have some that are more like in a color family um, that you can still wear up on over the lid. But these, I definitely wouldn't say warm or cool. These are more colorful. When you get into the browns, it's important to know the undertone of the color you're using. And sometimes it's kind of hard to tell until you see it next to other shades. Um, it's just like picking paint swatches, right? You, It's hard to tell the undertone of a white or a gray until you see it next to a bunch of other whites or grays and then you're like, oh, that one's purely, you know, obviously a blue undertone and that one's obviously green. It's the same way with eyeshadows, okay? You can probably tell right off the bat which ones are warmer, okay? Which lend towards the orange or red family. Those have warmth to them. When I say warm, I'm always talking, it's got more orange and red undertones. And then we get into cool, which is like basic or cafe, um, something like oak that really just have no warmth. They're straight up cool. They look more like contours, like natural shadow, um, because they have more gray in them, right? Less warmth. And then we have a few that I would say are a little bit more neutral. Um, sometimes I just call basic straight up neutral because sometimes on the eye, it can look, can look uh, warmer on some skin tones, okay? And then olive, or I said olive, this is bird is very similar to the contour olive, okay? And you can tell probably by looking, it's slightly warmer, um, but that's because of, of its green undertone. So looking at them next to each other, you can probably tell this is more gray, this has more green, cafe has more purple undertone, um, and undertone is what's making it pull more cool or warm. So first of all, you have to figure out, do you want more of a cool tone or more of a warm tone, okay? If you're wanting, if you don't know where to start, I would start with basic. I'd say it's the most neutral, basic or oak, and oak is just much darker. It's more of a four or five shade, and basic is more of a four shade. It's going to look good with anything you pair it with because it is, it's just got great neutrality, all right? But you can easily pick a cool shade and a warm shade, and those would be your two four shades. So you do have some versatility when you are mixing and matching shades. You know it'll go with everything because a mix of cool and warm on the eye is always balancing, right? So you could easily go, you guys probably know my favorite of all time right now is Sedona. You can tell that's got a little bit more warmth, but next to Holly, you can tell it's not super warm, right? So this is Bubba. Butterscotch, Holly, Pomegranate. So you can tell it's it's warmer than oak, okay? But it's not like straight up orange like Leo was oak. Er, Leo. Okay, difference, right? So Sedona, oak. Oh my gosh, Sedona and Leo. I can't talk today. So Leo, 
Again, one of the warmest shades we have, makes blue eyes pop like you wouldn't believe, but Sedona really can pull more neutral depending on what it's paired with. So if you pair a shade like that with something warmer, it's gonna be more neutral in comparison, okay? So Zion used to be one of our warmest shades until we got Holly, and now Holly's even warmer and darker. So, depends on your preference. I would say pick two different undertones, unless you are somebody that just only wears cool. Or like me, I tend to always go with warmth, but I always um, try to not do an only all warm look. Those are a lot more rare. One of each will allow you a little bit more versatility. So I'm gonna try not to pick my favorite, which is Sedona. In my opinion, if you want cool, I would say go with Cafe or Lullaby. Those are, Cafe is a little bit more gray, Lullaby is more of a mauve, but it is definitely, they're both cool. I would pick one of those, and then I would pick something more neutral um, or more warm if you're willing so that you have a little bit of contrast. So this, I'd say Lullaby is more of a color in my opinion. Yes, it's cool, but it's definitely more mauve. If you like warm, I would say Zion or Holly are two of my favorites. And then you can get into more color with something like pomegranate. Um, if you're really brave, me, <laughs> me, hee -ha. Um, and then these down here, which is Claire and, oh gosh, what's this called? Havana are much more color categories. Like those you can even wear on the lid. Um, and I would say pair them with something more neutral as your crease shade in order to kind of complete that look. You're like me and love a lot of warmth, butterscotch. That's butterscotch compared to Bubba. Bubba was always my go-to. And you can tell next to butterscotch, it looks so neutral. I'm gonna pick a warm and a cool, and one of those is gonna be more colorful. So I am gonna pick oak. I feel like it's a great four or five that I use this one a lot, as you can tell, because it truly can be really lightly. It can cool down and really pull in neutral tones. Um, but I can also even build that up in the outer corner. And then I'm gonna pick Holly. I feel like Holly is so pretty. I know people are scared of that warmth, but guys, I'm trying not to pick Sedona, even though that's the one I wanna pick. So I'm gonna show you how easily that can pair with some other colors. All right, and then last but not least, we're gonna get into our last row, which are both gonna be fives. Now, if you never wear your eyes a little bit more dramatic, where to where you're like, okay, I never wear an outer corner shade, I never wear an eyeliner, then I would skip these, okay? If you don't like that deep, dark shade to add a little bit more drama, which is technically what these do, I would say add one more shimmer um, in the two to three category and one more in the four category, so that way you have more color options there. Um, for me, I tend to always wear something along my lash line. I love a pop of color sometimes, and I love the outer corner anytime it's a special occasion. That is what completely com like changes the way my eyes look and makes my eyes look bigger. So to me, it's a non-negotiable and I would pick two of these shades. Now, again, I'd pick one neutral. Technically, we could probably wear either of these shades in the outer corner, but in case you picked two more four, four shades that are a touch lighter that you can't really build up that much, I'd say go with two fives. These down here, you can probably tell by looking, are more the five category, except for that one. Um, which way am I, let's put it down here. Okay, are much more the five category. So if you've been watching me on Instagram, I've been obsessed with Revival. Like I could wear this shade every single day. It's amazing. So five is a deep dark shade. This is something, like I said, outer corner or as liner, have a liner color like we chose in replacement of another number one. You can just pick one of these and add another shimmer, whatever you think you're gonna wear more of. If you're like, eh, I'm not gonna wear 
multiples of that but i feel like this is a really great way to bring in pops of color if you do like that because some of these are so beautiful as liner okay, so some of my favorite is amethyst ken eve oh my gosh so let's see if i can show you guys the comparison so amethyst it's more of a blue undertoned purple okay very dark um Kin is more of a burgundy kind of purple shimmer. And then Eve is more of just a straight up burgundy. You can kind of tell. But these two are shimmery. Amethyst is a matte. When it comes to that deep dark shade, you can tell. They just don't, um, if they're shimmery, they just don't reflect as much light. So I find that it doesn't really matter if you're placing it in that outer corner and as liner, it's not gonna reflect light to where it's really going to emphasize texture like those brighter, really light highlights do. Does that make sense? Um, oh gosh, another favorite is Gilded. And so that's Gilded next to Eve. You can tell they're very similar. Um, I'd say it's more obvious in person that uh, Gilded is more coppery than Eve. I don't know if you can kind of see that. Oh, it's so pretty. Obviously, you can stick with the more matte shades. So this is Coco and oh my gosh, what was that named? Labyrinth. I always forget that one. This one is like a dark version of Bird in my opinion. Green undertone. Coco is more of a warm undertoned brown. And then I already showed you Trust and Cole. Um, my favorite dark browns, this one is probably my second recommended shade after Stardust as a neutral. It is my fave. So that is Finn compared to, did this one change names? Snowbird, did it change? If it did, I'll look below. Okay, so these are very similar. Finn is darker. Um, and in my opinion more bronzy like that deep bronzy and snowbird is more of a lighter but again they're very close so if you have one i don't know if you necessarily need both and then next to rigoletto because i get asked that one a lot as well that is rigoletto which i feel like is more of a charcoal shimmer okay more bronzy more brown and more charcoal. Okay. But those three are pretty close. So I'm going to pick one of those. And I always tend to go with Finn because it's one of my favorite shades to use along the lash line for a bronzy smoky eye look. So good. And this color looks good with anything. And then I'm going to pick a matte for the other shade. Um, and I normally would pick Revival, but I feel like I've, I've been wearing nothing but that shade lately. So I'm going to pick Coco for my warm, dark brown. All right. So those are my shades. Let me finish swatching. All right. So those are our shades. Okay. And you can see, I feel like we've got a great mix of light, neutral, some colors, some cool, some warm, Okay, and that's kind of how I would recommend setting up your palette, a good mix, okay? And if you like more bold colors, I feel like these probably aren't the most bold. I would say just switch out one for a bold color. Um, that way you it still have some warm and cool to pair with it, and that way you can do multiple looks. All right, since I've talked way too long just about choosing colors, let's do a quick eye look or two, so I can show you. Okay, I'm gonna show you some swatch color comparisons. I think that would be, or color combinations, I think that would be a little bit easier to tell you or show you um, than showing you every eye look. But when it comes to when you have eight shades like this, it's really easily, okay, we're gonna use this as a brightener, and then we're gonna pick one of the two colors on the lid. Okay, so either Stardust or Crush, and then we're gonna pick one of these two colors to pair it with. And literally we're pick one of these two colors as the crease and one of these as either a outer corner or liner or both, okay? And then you can do the same exact look 
by switching just one and using the rest. And then you could switch two. Like that's why I say that color combinations are endless as long as you have some neutrals. And honestly, I feel like with this palette we chose, there are not any colors that would not go together. Even if I picked all of the more colorful versions, okay? So Crush Holly Cocoa would be an all warm look. Stardust Oak Finn would be an all cool look, okay? Crush Holly, oh, I say, I already did that one. Crush Oak Cocoa, okay, would be a mixture of warm and cool. Um, Crush Oak Finn would be, again, warm with cool. Stardust Holly Cocoa would be cool with warm. Stardust Holly Finn would be cool with warm. So you're going to have balanced look. You can easily get an all one or the other. And then if it doesn't look right, add a little bit of whatever that opposite shade is. So when you have something more neutral or cool and something more warm, which we technically picked out for each of these. So this is more warm. This is more cool, cool, warm, warm, cool. And so since we have that balance, you can mix and match anything. And again, if you did pick out a more bold, bold color, I know we have some colors, but these aren't really that bold in my opinion. If you picked out one bold, um, you probably would have a little less versatility, but again, this is kind of like a starter palette in my opinion. And again, you don't have to use all of these for every eye look. So you can easily just do color on the lid, color in the crease, done. Two colors, you're done, okay? You can easily just do a crease color and then brighten, done. You can easily just throw a shimmer on the lid, done, okay? You can easily do two or three or all four, even five if you wanna align. You can wear all these colors as one, two or three or four, just depending on the day, um, you can easily go from a day look and just do, you know, a color on the lid, um, maybe a color in the crease, and then at night add that last shade to kind of give you more depth and more drama for date night, okay? So any of these can be worn in this way, and I'll kind of show you as I'm applying where you can stop for multiple looks. So first of all, we're going to start with, and in my opinion, I always start with the crease and not the lid. And it's just a personal preference, but for me and my eyes, um, since I'm hooded, I won't be able to, I, I can't see a lid shade. If that's the only color I'm wearing, I won't be able to see it. But I can see a, a color on my hood and it opens up my eyes. So I'm gonna start with that. And first thing is I'm just gonna use I'm gonna use oak. I'm gonna do one on one side and one on the other, and we're gonna see which one we like better. All right, so let's go ahead and just use oak as the crease over here. And one thing I didn't pick in this is, is a corrector shade, which I call a shade that matches your eyelid color. Um, normally mine is chai, since I did not choose that color because that would have taken a lot of fun out because it's not really a fun color. It's just like the same color as my lid. So instead, you can use vanilla dust. Anywhere you need to blend, okay, use vanilla dust. It works like a charm. Okay, so there's oak just as my hood crease color. That way suddenly my eye gets opened up and then I'm gonna use the same color lightly because this color can be a little bit dark if you build it up along the lower lash line to halo and give me a little bit of soft definition and suddenly this eye looks so much bigger than this one, right? Same thing, we could stop there. Now I'm gonna do the other eye and I'm gonna use the other color which is Holly. 
which is our warm. Ooh, and see how dark that can be? Always tap off excess and be very like very light and gentle as you're touching the eye. Because if you go in with a lot of pressure, it just deposits all that color in one spot. So I feel like I already got a lot, so I'm gonna take my brush and get off the remainder with my shadow switcher brush cleaning tile. And then I'm gonna go back in to blend this and kind of distribute that where I want it. Okay, it's always better to start with less and then you can build up. And since both of these are four fives, look how this one's a little bit darker because I applied a little bit more and then I blended this one out a lot and you see how much lighter that can be. Again, eyeshadow is just kind of like our makeup. It's all in how much you apply. So I'm gonna go in a little bit more. And then I'm going to grab that vanilla dust again because I do wanna keep my inner corners light and not that dark. Okay, and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stop there. So open your eyes, make sure you can see the color. And then again, same thing. I'm gonna use a little bit of that on the lower lash line. Okay, Holly and Oak. Can you see the difference in tone? Cool and warm, right? Do we wanna mix it or do we wanna do all warm and all cool. I feel like we need to mix it up. This side has oak, so we are going to, actually, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and brighten so I don't forget. Um, obviously, if you just wanna do one color, end right there, you can always just use that illuminator. I'm wearing uh, the new chandelier. You can easily just pop that on the inner corner and you'd be done with that step. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that drift and do both sides because I feel like this part takes two seconds, but can make the biggest difference in kind of lifting and brightening the eye. Now, for a two shaded look, I usually don't count the highlight shade. I'm just gonna do the lid color. Okay, so this side is cool. So I'm gonna grab the warm one, which is Crush, and the eyeshadow brush and just do um, the side of the brush so I can just kind of do a wash of color on the lid. And I'm gonna show you how subtle Crush can be. It's such a pretty shade. And do you see how it doesn't blend in too much because of that cool shade? I'll be honest, I feel like this row, well, actually, you know what, I'm gonna move this. It would have been smarter to move this so you guys can see. These are all cool, these are all warm. All cool here, you're probably not gonna have as much uh, contrast between colors, okay? So if you're having issues to where you do your eyes and you're like, I feel like the colors all just kinda get muddied together and it just looks like one color all over the lid, but I applied three different colors, sometimes that's because they're all in too similar in the same color family. These three I feel like are far enough apart, they don't look like they're similar, but these, yes, you got some shimmer, and some mattes, but they're gonna be a very much more monochromatic look. And so it's not gonna give you that distinction as much. So if you're really wanting to see the difference in colors, I recommend picking those warm and cools. That will always give you distinction if they have different undertones and they're not like literally this, almost the exact same depth, okay? So I'm just going to kind of use crush on the lid like so crush and oak and then once you have that color in the lid you can easily be like all right I'm gonna add a little bit more depth I like to usually go back into the literal crease here and add more depth there so it kind of increases that shadow and blends any shimmer that might have got in my crease because shimmer is what will add more texture, right? The other side, this was Holly. 
Now we're gonna pick that neutral, which is Stardust, and we're gonna do the same thing. And can you see that distinction between the two? Cause they're different undertones. Now Crush and Holly will look amazing together for sure. These three, I feel like would be a really beautiful kind of sunset -y look because they're in that color family. For some reason, I feel like all warm tones are easier to wear than all cool tones. And maybe it's because of my skin tone and I just look, I don't look good in all cool tones because I naturally have warmth. Um, but a sunset eye, I don't think I've ever seen look bad on anyone. It looks so pretty. Okay, so then I can go back in again with Holly and build up. Some depth there, keep it blended. Keep it blended, Sarah. <laughs> I don't know what I did before this shadow switcher. I use it so much. And there you go, there's an easy two color. I feel like I need a little bit more oak to be even. I feel like Holly's pulling darker than oak. Not that I'm trying to get my lids to match, guys. I know I'm wearing two different eyeshadow looks. Just so you guys can compare the two a little easier. I can get the idea. It really does look so opposite. It's like cool, warm, warm, cool. <laughs> okay, so with that last five shade, I'm gonna show you two different ways to wear it because I keep talking about liner or outer corner. Um, sometimes I do it as both, but it just kind of depends on the overall look I'm going for. So on this side, we got Crush and Oak. Okay, I feel like I need a little bit more warmth in this area instead of something cool. So I'm gonna go with Cocoa. Okay, so this I'm gonna use in the outer corner. So I'm gonna go with the smudge brush, the dome in, Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of tap this in on that outer corner into the crease and just keep tapping in that V formation as I build up that color and depth there. Okay, flip it over and blend. I feel like I applied a lot, but that's okay. Get a clean eyeshadow brush. You could always kind of blend that out a little bit. Okay, and usually anytime I put a dark outer corner color, I will pick up that multitasker and use the same color just on that outside corner of the lash line to kind of tie it together, kind of give you that smoked out look. Okay, so there you go. That was brush, oak, Cocoa. See how pretty those are together? Crush looks good with anything, guys. It's so pretty. I would say that is one of my top five, definitely in the top five shades. On this side, I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm going to go ahead and line first because I haven't put any eyeliner on this side, but can you tell how much depth it looks like I've got because of the color choices because of going in with that darker shade. So this side I feel like needs it. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with Black Friday eyeliner for first so I get the depth I need at the lash line. Okay, and I just use a little bit. Okay, just for a little bit of depth. Now I'm gonna grab that multitasker again, but this time I'm gonna go into Finn. Okay, and I'm going to use the side of my brush to just and kind of tap off excess so it doesn't give me fallout. But I'm just going to kind of press it messily along that line. And I say messily because I'm not wanting a precise line. I'm wanting the lash line to be kind of smoked out with that color. But I've got that deep, dark, black, Black Friday liner. So even though I'm kind of toning it down with this more, uh, where is it? 
this shade because honestly, like it doesn't go on that dark when you're applying it, right? Unless you're really building up that color. So we're just gonna kind of press it on along the lash line. Okay, and I want it like a little higher up, so. Same thing, I'm gonna use a little bit along, if I can see, along the lash line to kind of smoke it out. Okay, and the main reason for that was that I used Holly along my lash line, because that was our color up here. And it has more red undertone, right? It's a little bit more red. Sometimes when using reds around our eyes can actually make your eyes look a little bit more bloodshot. You gotta be a little bit careful. And so with Holly, I'm gonna kind of cool it down a little bit with that fin. And now it doesn't look red at all. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of press that right there in the corner and then make sure I don't need any more built up. Okay, so that side was Stardust Holly Finn. Okay, so pretty, so pretty. So even colors that you don't think will go together. I promise guys, try them out, experiment with them. Worst thing that's gonna happen is you don't like it. Use a makeup remover wipe. Take it off and try again. It's not It's not that hard. Okay, there you go. So we did use Drift as a brightener in every look, but that was two different looks. I'm gonna take some pictures. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. It's so dark and dreary here today. All right, guys, so I add a little bottom lash mascara. Hopefully you can see the difference between the two looks and hopefully that gave you a little bit more help on picking eyeshadows. Um, I will put the link to this palette down below in case you're interested in this one, but I know it's overwhelming the amount of eyeshadows we have. Ever needing recommendations, um, you can always shoot me an email. It's sarah at thecontouredchemist.com and I can help you out with color combinations or picking colors for your eyes or at least give you suggestions on where to start um, based on what you like. You just have to tell me what you like. If you are like, nope, I need all mattes. Where do I start? Or you're like, I don't like warm tones, Sarah. I know I hear that a lot, even though they are my favorite. If you're just like, I want a subtle warmth, just a little bit. I can tell you which one would be your best bet. As always, if you're needing help with your makeup or needing a color match, my color match request link is in the drop box below the video as well. I'd be happy to help you out there. I feel there. like I could have talked another whole hour on doing different eye looks with this combination, but don't forget you can easily just pick one or two of these guys. Um, eight is a great place to start if you're wanting to get started with uh, Saints eyeshadows. I feel like it gives you just enough of each category that you can easily pick and choose different ones on the daily. You guys, this will give you an endless amount and combination and every time you add another shade it's just going to be that many more combinations like i wish i could do the math but i but i can't <laughs> somebody that's good at math uh tell me how many different combinations it would be i guess it would be depend it'd be hard to figure out because it'd be dependent on how many different colors you're wanting to wear on the daily that's why i'm like it could be so many you have any questions uh don't hesitate to reach out and again, thank you guys so much for being here. Love you. Bye.